Hi everyone and welcome to the training on 360 video in Unity. My name is Sarah and I'm a producer at Unity who specializes in VR, AR, and 360 video. In this session, you will learn how to import your own 360 videos in Unity and play them back in real time with interactive elements. So we're gonna learn how to use the native video player that's built into Unity and uh, the new Skybox panoramic shader that came out in 2017.3. And that shader is what allows us to play back the video in this equirectangular format. We will also learn how to use Unity's UI system and scene management tools to switch between different videos. For instance, here I have my menu pulled up and I can select this video. I'm going to have some nice uh, fading in and fading out between the videos. I can pause this video now that I'm here, play it again, and I can select a different video and it will load another one. Now, right now, I'm just doing this directly in the editor using this 2D menu screen, but we're also going to cover how to add in VR interaction and we're going to cover gaze-based interaction and controller interaction. So for controllers, we're going to use both a mobile controller scenario with the uh, Google Daydream. And we're also going to use a desktop VR controller scenario with the Oculus Touch or um, an OpenVR HTC Vive controller. We recently released the Interactive 360 Video Sample Project, and that's both on the Asset Store and in the Unity Learn Hub. I have it open here in my project, and I'm going to be using the sample project throughout the session. Once we finish the training, I encourage all of you to download the sample content and play around with it. It is free and all of the functionality and code can be reused in your specific project. Okay, let's take a look at the different scenes I have here included in the sample project. So I have some starting scenes and these are gonna be the scenes that we're gonna use to add in interactions. So we have a uh, hotspot example gaze, that's going to be an example that shows us how to create a hotspot. And then we have a controller and a GVR controller stands for Google VR controller. So there's a couple different scenarios there. Now what I want to start with are one of these video scenes here. So a video scene in the sample project is just a scene that contains a 360 video. I'm going to open 2D Lookout. And right now my background is just going to be black. I'll explain why that is in a minute. But when I hit play, I have a 360 video that's going to play back. And I can look around up here. I'm actually not using my VR headset right now, so I can't look around in the game view. Um, but to change that, I can add a script to my camera. And that one's called Camera Editor Control. Um, so if I go into my project and go to Utilities, Camera Editor Control, I'm just going to drag that script onto my camera in the inspector. And now I can work directly in the editor and mock uh, the view of a VR headset uh, without actually having my headset hooked up. And by the way, we will use a headset in a few minutes, so don't worry if you are worried about that uh, right now. I just want to simplify things and do it directly in the editor here. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on. So in my scene, I have only four um, game objects. I have a directional light, all right. I have um, an event system, and that's uh, based on the Unity UI system. I have a camera, uh, just a regular camera. I added that camera editor control script. And then I have my video game object. So my video game object is what's um, actually holding the video information here. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so my video player component, it has a source field. And my source is going to be a video clip in this instance because the clip that I want to play is located directly in my project. Now I could also use a URL and this becomes handy, especially with 360 videos or any videos that are really large. 
um, because if you have a Unity project with like 10 different really large video files, it's going to be a very large download. Um, whereas if you're using this URL as the source, you can um, stream in the video clip as, um, as its URL. Uh, so the video clip that I'm using is 2D Lookout 1, and that's just located here in my project under the video folder. Okay, so you'll notice I have a couple of 2D videos and a few 3D videos as well. So we'll start with 2D and then we'll go into 3D. Uh, I have play on awake checked. That just means that I'm going to play right when the scene starts. Um, of course, there may be an instance where you don't want to play right when the scene starts and instead you want to trigger the video to play um, when maybe maybe it's an interactive scene and your user uh, hits a button and then the video will play. And we can also check this box if we want it to loop. So I'm going to go ahead and check the loop box because I just it's a pretty short video and you know all it is is just a view here and some people walking around. So having it looping kind of makes sense in this scenario. And then we have a playback speed. So usually you're going to want this to be one, but maybe you're doing some sort of time lapse. You could turn it way up and let's see. Then it'll play back a bit faster. It's, it's a little bit jumpy. <laughs> All right, so let's put that back to one. There we go. And then we have this render mode field right here. So we have different options of where we where we want to render the video to. Um, I'll go over these um, in a bit, but we're using the render texture for the 360 video. And that just means that we're rendering the video content to a texture that we created. And that texture that we created is defined as the target texture. So in our case, we're rendering the video to this specific texture, 2D, 3840 by 2160. Um, and the reason it has that size is because that's the same size, the same uh, ratio as the video file, 3840 by 2160 pixels. And that's a really common uh, format for 4K video. All right, and aspect ratio, we want to fit horizontally. And then we have this audio output mode um, section here. And right now, I'm actually not playing back any audio with this video file. It's basically just wind noise. But if you want to include audio, you have to add an audio source component to your video. 